Hello, hello, hello. So here we are again, me and Martha, filming and talking about all the stuff we always talk about. The, vo the volume worked pretty good last time. I've actually got a little external speaker that I can attach to this to improve that, but it worked so good last time that I'm speaking deliberately, kind of speaking a little bit loud so that it will. Um, so we'll try to go with this. <clears throat> We're in a blizzard here, um, ice and snow and wind and uh, uh, the interstates are shut down and uh, nothing ultra serious as long as you're not out in it driving and I'm not and I encourage everybody else to not. Uh, I'm just going to speak to... Uh, I guess I'm going to speak to the postings today. I did a Rush Limbaugh thing. I just had him on. I was going to leave him in the background talking, but I didn't know how that would work. Um, and sometimes I got my television over here. You know, them people that are professional at this stuff, the, they show little news clips and sound clips, and and they're trying to, um, and they do it. It's, it's pretty effective way of communicating their point. Uh, you know, Rush would play a, sound clip of Obama, you know, either live on television or on the radio, or, and then they would speak to that. And, and I don't know that any of this or any, any one of them is worth speaking to. It's, uh, this is such a mess, you know. I, um, you know, current events, uh, they were doing a big abortion thing this morning. I, I try to scan the television channels and sometimes the radio channels, not constantly, but, and then the newspapers, I, I, I scan four or five of them and, and uh, the websites. Um, I spent a few hours a day doing that. Staying current on, on um, world events. And uh, then I post some of that stuff that I find interesting and things trying to show um, you and all you folks and everybody the reality of what's going on here and this message specifically for me about my discovery. And I put this shirt on. I was sitting there, I, got, I took a nice shower and I'm all freshened up and I feel good. You know, I bathe without soap. You know, soap, you know, people will think, that, uh, people laugh at everything I do, you know. But, but really, you know, I think a hundred years from now, they, they'll say, Jesus, you know, soap is, you know, and all of it's just the soap in itself. And then whatever additives they put in it, um, you know, is deadly stuff. You know, we don't know where the prostate cancer is coming from. I say it's our underwear and even the different women's cancers, you know. I wash my clothes without soap. And, and I will put a little shaving lather on when I shave, and um, that's it. Uh, so I'm just clean as a whistle here. I got a nice clean shirt, and me and my shirt was both washed without soap or bleach or anything else, just in the water, you know, and then dry them and, uh, and you know, the hot air and stuff, and you get the stink out of them because you get the human odor, you know. And, um, and I'd rather have the human odor to a normal degree. Um, and then all that gussied up powder and perfume and stuff it makes me want to puke sometimes. That's so much of that stuff that people do. But they think they stink if they don't do that. See, well, I don't stink. And, and, and uh, nobody stinks if they, uh, you know, take normal hygiene. But that doesn't have to involve deodorants and it doesn't have to involve soap uh, and, and bleaches for Snow White. And, you know, if the tide bleach in the Snow White thing didn't harm us or the environment, that'd be just fine, but, but it does. You know, we got, you know, they're talking about longevity. You see that quite a bit, uh, 84. The average person at 65, as said today, uh, can expect to live to about 84 if it's a woman, or 82, I think, if it's a man, something close to that. And, and um, but what they're not telling you uh, is the quality of life there and what's left of these old people. That, and I'm talking my age people, you know, and I've gotten a few handicaps, but I get around pretty good for the most part. Um, but you sit, uh, and, and uh, grand, my granny, Daisy Bunnell, she was a great people watcher. She used to love to ride the Greyhound buses all over the country 
visiting her kids and grandkids, including myself, my wife, and my children. And she'd go to South Carolina and up to Washington and California and Minnesota and, and wherever the kids, Kansas, and wherever the kids happen to be, you know, our, our globe, and even Saudi Arabia. Right, we had one of our aunts was uh, worked for Ramco over there in the commissary, her and her husband. So, but Granny was known to be a people watcher and slot machine. She used to like to go through Vegas and get on those slot machines, and she liked to bet on the ponies a little bit, too. Well, Granny, she's full blood English. She's a Perkins. Uh, she didn't realize, you know, she was innocent uh, of, uh, you know, wrongdoings. You know, a little uh, $25 in the slots or, you know, $20 on the ponies. You know, she didn't lose the house and the farm. And, and, um, and Granny, like everybody's Granny, and I had a wonderful Granny. I didn't get to know my other grandma. My grandma, other grandma, they used to call her Doff. She was uh, Delphia Hartman, and um, Dodd, right where I live here now. Granny Daisy Bunnell was right here too, and, and my whole family was right here in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, and you know the surrounding areas within a few miles, and. Um, but they were all innocent of um, this whole world of, of um, modernization. You know, they, they both come from the horses and the wagons era. And, and, um, and I speak to it quite a bit. But my mom was born down here, you know, six miles or something in a covered wagon. And, and that's typical. I'm 71. I'll be 72 in April. That's typical. Uh, you know, they rode on trains and they walked. And they and they uh, wagon trains and horses and that's all they had. No electricity, no running water, and uh, just that little while ago. I'm talking about my mother, you know, and and, and even uh, you know my and then my grandmother's most definitely, you know. So that's not 500 years ago, you know. That's yesterday, and then the, this whole evolution thing that we've found find ourselves in that's gone on since then and up until today you know with the population and the fossil fuels and the food chain and the lifestyles you know it used to be the families were just like really you could almost go back ten thousand years or something that families are gathering food sources and and, and heat and shelter and you know, socializing and visiting and the families and people and the women are enjoying, the men are enjoying, the kids and the babies and kind of lost all of that. We, ha we have it to an extent, you know, and then we'll get in the car and we'll go to grandma's house for Christmas, you know, and, and um, but that's not like having grandma and grandpa right there, you know, right here in the same room, you know, or same place. It didn't have to be a house, you know. Um, and, and uh, that's what's supposed to be, and that's what it has been since the beginning of time. And and uh, so, and it's a great benefit to everybody, the children, and, and uh, the adolescents, and the teenagers, and I mean babies, and, and the older people. I mean, we're all, you know, little babies are crawling right now. I'd have two or three little ones, Grandpa, you know, and coming crawling through my legs here, you know, and saying, Grandpa, what are we going to do? And I'd say, no, I'm filming here now. You guys, come on. And they say, okay, and, and then, uh, you know, the women are cooking, and the men are doing this, and the kids are doing that, and, I mean, there's just stuff going on. And, and again, there's a lot of this, this does go on, and we, we salvage what we can um, amongst that. And there are little enclaves of, you know, you got Italians, you got six or eight of the family members in the neighboring houses and some of the apartment out and the tribes, the Indian tribes are very good at that. And they got villages, you know, and, uh, but even they separated to some extent, the Mexicans, they have a lot of people living close, you know, and in the same house, a lot of times share expenses and, and the Asian and the, we white, we're more wealthy. See, so we're more wealthy. So we think that we get to have, uh, we're supposed to well, so not get to have, but we're supposed to have, all these individual houses, you know, to, to, to live in and, and visit one another, get in our cars and go and come and talk on the phones. And, and that's an okay life. But the, but the social breakdown 
the children, see, they, when our children are uh, out in this jungle and they go into the schools and they go into the workplaces and stuff and all this multitude of influences and, and um, if there's an entire family unit that's just constantly circulating with one another, uh, we, we can deal with all of these in lots more effectively. And, and um, so that's part of this violating of, of natural law that we're doing here and, and we're paying the price for it, you know. This whole thing is really, I don't know what to say. Um, you know, I hate being this goddamn pessimistic guy, you know. And, and, um, but how do you not face this reality, you know, of what has happened? And, and, and of course, I've got this discovery of mine, this whole the core cause in all this, and nobody else has got that, nobody. The Democrats, the liberals, the uh, activists, the uh, uh, American Indian movement, the uh, uh, Alcatraz, uh, the, the um, you know, the Mexicans, the India, Chinese, Buddha, uh, I don't care who they are, ain't nobody onto this thing, nobody. I mean, the Baptists and the Italians and the Romans and the Jews and, and the Gentiles and the Palestinians and the Arabs and, you know, the South Americans and North Americans and, you know, the rich and the poor and the educated and uneducated, the science, uh, technology, nobody, nobody. Everybody's got their cup of coffee, you know, and they're having their... You know, I, Oprah was on the other day, and she now she's Weight Watchers. She's endorsing them again. So she's got Weight Watchers, and she said it works great. She said, I do 10,000 steps a day. And she said, along my 10,000 steps, I get to eat the, eat the Weight Watchers diets and food, and, and within that, she gets to have her tacos and her pasta. See? So she loves wheat, see? And she has no idea that uh, the, that wheat is uh, the you know, the deadliest force on the planet Earth, wheat, flour, you know, fry bread, tacos, pizza, uh, noodles, pasta, uh, cereal, you know, I mean, uh, the Last Supper, you know, alcohol in the form of wine, they say, and then uh, the breaking of the bread, you know, I think unleavened bread, instead of, that was another factor that came in, but wheat, Wheat, see, wheat in its natural form in the real world. Now, the real world, of course, doesn't have any high breeding, and it's not agriculturized. So, so it's not, and it doesn't have any shipping worldwide. They might put a something in a camel or something and go fifty miles or a hundred or something, but, but it's not ship loads and then airplane loads uh, of bags of flour and. So the, the content, um, sugar is, is natural in, in, in all of our plant life. And, and a little bit like an egg has got one carb. And I don't know if the meats, but our bodies convert all that stuff. But that natural wheat, just like the natural corn and the natural carrots and the natural potatoes, they were just little, you know, plant stock type things that... You could find, if in, depending what area you were living in, you know, some places there was rice available, and and, and it grew in the water as a water aquatic type plant, and and the wheat was a dry, dry ground or a you know common ground plant, and and uh, you know and apples and oranges and every everything you could think of, all of those plants, you know, what a real orange was and the availability of those real oranges and the apples and the wheat. So now the wheat, um, one of the early discoveries that we hear most about, you know, and, and just think it's benign, I think is the word they would use for just absolutely nothing but good, healthy food. That's what I thought seven, eight, ten years ago, 206, when I made this discovery uh, that wheat, when it hits your stomach, uh, flour, is the same thing as refined sugar. And I said, well, yeah, but refined sugar, that's a different bird. This is wheat. This is seeds is nature you know and then the light came on because i got pretty extensive background in in uh, farming and and agriculture and science and different things and i'm pretty well read and pretty knowledgeable and then they've been i've seen them breeding pigs and and, and apples they, they i was there when they when the red delicious apple came out 
and, and then later the Golden, I think. And they were they were concerned. I lived in Washington at the time, and, and the Pullman College over there was breeding, um, uh, working with breeding apples, and and because it was big apple country there in in eastern Washington, and pigs just in for general and swine. So they made a pig with an extra rib, and big hams. They crossed two: the one that had the rib, and then the other one had the ham, and they come up with a pig uh, called a Palouse. They named it after that area there. That had both, and so that was a more marketable, you know. And then they they breed these turkeys and feed them and stuff until until uh, they start having too many heart attacks, and and they break their legs from that weight uh, of being you know contained and fed, and, and then they got to back off a little. See, they got to got to tweak and tune on this to get it just right. So the wheat that's 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 another uh, hybrid. Um, from way back, you know, you can probably go back to Egypt and Greece and, and, and who knows what before that. And so we're talking thousands and ten thousands of years. And and, and, and then the, the growing of and, and then, uh, you know, the eating, eating. And, um, and it isn't just one thing, just like the Aztec and, and the Maya. They didn't have only the corn. They did a lot of the stuff, you know, uh, beans for sure. And, and um, I think they called it corn maize or something. And it's just, and of course, the human, we humans, we just love that, you know, cornmeal and corn on the cob. And we don't realize it was just a little teeny knob, you know, that was all the enzymes and nutrients and minerals and fiber. What I'm getting at is the amount of sugars and carbohydrates that we consumed. Those are normal amounts. And, and, and along with the fishes and the birds and the bugs and the whatever else we're eating, depending on how hungry we are and what's available to us, lizards and snakes and fish and birds and, and, and uh, every, you know, rabbits, I mean, absolutely everything. And, and um, so the ratio. So people think, yeah, I'm okay, big deal. So you get more, they might give you diabetes or something if you eat too much and, and or even heart disease and, but what they're not looking at is a psychological thing that kicks in here with all that stimulant in our bloodstream. And I'll give you an example of concentrations. And I can see this concentration I'm about to, to present to you here. But I don't know if you can or not. But um, uh, an orange. Now, let's take a real orange or this modern orange, you know, a navel orange or whatever they are. Uh, all these super oranges and orange juice that we all love so much. Now, there's actual alcohol in there, I've, I'm told, and I believe it. Uh, trace amounts in the citrus citrus fruit realm, uh, probably limes and lemons and oranges and whatever else there is in the citrus. And uh, by nature, and the why is in the house of, of nature's perfect plan of... of um, of having of these having alcohol within there, a preservative maybe, so that when it hits the ground, it protects the seed for a certain length of time, so it's potential to grow another tree. Or so it's nature. But we're talking trace amounts. So when we go to the grocery store and we get an orange and we give it to our little ones or ourselves or whoever, we're getting a little trace amount of alcohol. And and you know you'd have to eat a you know pick up load of them or something to get an ounce of alcohol. I'm just wild guessing. Uh, we get such a, such a trace amount. So the trace amounts of alcohol, but you concentrate that alcohol and, and get it to where you could, can have ounces. You, you got a powerful drug, you know, 180 proof alcohol. You know, let's, let's get a pint of it now. You know, glug, glug, glug. We got a drug, you know, just knocking the shit out of us. Okay, this sugar. Now, that, here's the problem, too, you know. Some people can see, yeah, a pint of alcohol is going to knock the shit out of you. But they think a couple of slices of bread, that's just good. Or, a, or some pasta and noodles and, you know, homemade dumplings or, or, or fry bread, you know, or toast, you know, or pizza. That's, those are just normal amounts. And they also have the other foods with them. And the oils are cooked and baked in. And so they're thinking this is all okay. But I'm, I'm getting back to the ratios now. The ratios, even something as benign as, as, as a taco, a little taco shell, sometimes corn and sometimes wheat, you know, depending on which ones your flour tortillas or corn tortillas, and, and the pizza crust, you know, thick crust or shell crust. Um, if you were to go and live on your natural diet and get that same wheat, those same seeds, 
uh, pre and prior to high breeding, and, and, and uh, which raises their sugar content right out of the gate with the seed before the seed even germinates. And then there's the quantity of those that we, that we gather and consume and eat. The amount of carbohydrates in your bloodstream because it does just like they think this thing brown rice or brown flour or something's going to go slow and that's a good thing and, and, and but it all boils down to it's in your bloodstreams and and and, and um, even though those are contributing factors uh, they don't they they don't they don't tell the story at all uh, so now we got this wheat in 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 our system here and I'm saying it's all the way from a hundred to a thousand times. If you were to take a 30-day run on this or something. And it isn't just the wheat. You know, it's all the rest of the juices and the pops and the everything else. So that's when I get to the 100 times more sugar and carbohydrates than the 1,000. It isn't just that slice of bread. So this is reality I'm talking here. It's not some wild scheme of a dream and a distortion of reality to try to fit my scheme or something here, you know. This is reality. And so, like the orange, that it is true hardcore alcohol, and you could say you could do the same thing with caffeine, and in, 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 in its availabilities in the leaves and the tea and the and the coffee beans and the, and, and uh, chocolate beans and and the amounts of there, and then the hows of it came to be, and honey, honey's another one. That the bees and the bees protect that honey in that nest, except we domesticated them, and now they don't even bite. You know, if the people, the handlers that know how to do it, you know, you'll see them with an inch of bees all over them, you know, and they're just going in. They'll say maybe we'll get stung once in a while, but mostly not. And uh, taking the, the queen and making new colonies, you know, and harvesting that honey. So so the honey would not be natural to our diet. You know, there wouldn't be any bees if, if we were out there clobbering all them hives and taking all our honey. You know, this whole, all these humans, they, we'd wipe them right out. But we didn't and couldn't because they protected their honey and they protected it with their their um, bees attacking and stinging. There was a guy on the radio the other day. I think he was locally a thousand times he got stung or something and killed him. And uh, it was a tragedy like, like it would be. And I don't know if it was those African, there's where they're crossing those bees, you know, by accident. They got, got, out, of, got out of control. And we got a big problem here in the lakes with... Um, different um i don't know some kind of clams and mussels and stuff that are going from lake to lake and infesting them and they're they're upsetting nature's perfect balance uh which which man has been doing anyway so amongst all this that's the the stimulant thing here and that would include the alcohol and the caffeine and the nicotine and the wheat and the milk you know milk's for calves and and they get that big powerful start in life you know I got a little message come in here. My Hannah used my phone for a while, I, my granddaughter, so I get some of her messages come in here, but I don't, I don't answer them because that's her private stuff. So me and Martha are trying to get this to the world, this message. Well, what's the big deal? So it's a stimulant. It's a stimulant because it's a, a adrenaline, and I saw serotonin was another one I saw this morning, um, along with the endorphins and dopamine and... and, and um, uh, the male testosterone and whatever estrogen the female these these stimulants affect all that I remember years ago when I when I was I was had been a smoker since I was young very young kids as kids started smoking and I was trying to quit by the time I was in my 20s but boy I was hooked so bad there was just I, there was no way to do it and I tried and tried but I was having always been a reader. We had Reader's Digest in our house from the time I was a kid. They were them little little editions in those days, and, and they, you know, the humor and uniform, and then their whole series of um, articles and uh, kind of a real right wing conservative magazine. But I liked it. You know, I, I think I'd like it today. I I pick up one once in a while in a clinic or something. And, and uh, so I enjoyed reading and a lot of factual stuff in there. So they were telling, and I picked up on it, they were telling why people were having such a hard time because it was starting to become known that tobacco was a deadly, deadly poison and, and, and in no uncertain terms. And, and we all need to get off from it. And, and why was it so difficult? And what they said was that your adrenaline glands would secrete 
like a, uh, they, they, the way they described it was like a artesian flowing well. Now I knew about artesian flowing wells because the Olympia beer was made like 40 miles from where I grew up. And they always had their advertisements, the artesian spelking waters that was supposed to have been such a great benefit to their beer. So I knew about artesian wells that just kind of bubble over on their own. And if you can get to where you can gather that flowing well, some will call some of those different, different, different water sources that do that. Nature, you know, does it with oil even in some places. So the, um, I'm trying to lose my chain of thought here. The, the um, a Reader's Digest article was saying that when you're, you're normally your adrenaline glands just sit, sit there. You know, they're there. You know, all of a sudden I hear a great big boom or something. Boy, I'm I'm right away. Everything is, and I'm my adrenaline. And, and is, is it something in, that I need to run, see, or do? Or what was it? And I look out and I, I can see it was uh, a, a big truck or something. And he bang, went over and he went over the bump that made it. Made it and I said, oh, now I know everything's okay. And I think, boy, that was that scared the shit out of me. And then down it came, you know, back to normal again, which is where our, our drilling and in our bloodstream, uh, in our adrenaline glands, would typically normally be for everybody. Okay, so now though, what the Reader's Digest article was saying that this 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 uh, adrenaline bubbles over a little bit like an artesian well when we quit an addiction. In this case, nicotine. You know, they were talking about nicotine specifically. I took that step far. I said, Hey, I bet you that all of these addictions are going to be in this somewhat. There are a lot. And um, and sure enough, so this thing is bubbling, and that's why you can't sleep, and you get irritable, and you got the camel cigarette commercial, the guy will walk a mile for his camel, you know, he walk 10 miles in a storm, you know, and a true tobacco uh, addict, which is just about everybody that smokes, they're not being without their cigarette, they got their reserves, they'll go without groceries, they'll go without gas, they'll, they, they, they won't buy shoes for their kid, if it means taking away their tobacco. They gotta have a backup here of enough tobacco, cans and cartons and whatever it is, to weather out. Now, if they're just in a perfect climate and the money's easy to come by here and there or whatever, and then they can just buy them as they go, they'll do that. Some will buy them on one cigarette at a time, it doesn't matter. But if you're in an area where you're out packing into the woods or something, and, and you're gonna be there for an extended time, might get snowed in, you're gonna have your tobacco or whatever other addiction you might have. So these adrenaline glands now. Now, and, and what the Reader's Digest article didn't touch on is these adrenalines. When you've got adrenaline in your bloodstream, they also didn't touch on, and I didn't th think they tied it, and I'm really just kind of thinking about this right now as I'm talking about it, the fact that the nicotine did that to the adrenaline glands in the first place. It's a stimulant, a powerful stimulant, like caffeine and alcohol and, you know, the nicotine. And whatever else, there's supposed to be 68 or 100, however, whatever it is, other chemicals in there besides that. But nicotine is the big one we talk about. So, so it in of itself. See, they had no idea of that. This is all my discovery. That that this nicotine and this caffeine and this alcohol and this wheat and milk and juice and honey and all these sugars and carbohydrates and stimulants in our bloodstream, they, they do this adrenaline type thing. And, and in addition to the adrenaline, they do the, do the endorphins and serotonins and, uh, and uh, dopamines and everything else. And, and, uh, and, it, and it, we say, well, that's okay. We like that. We like, boy, that's good toast and milk, uh, juice for breakfast here. Sugar, sugar, sugar. And, and uh, so we just immediately do about 40 teaspoons of sugar right there for breakfast. You know, maybe some hash browns, you know. And... and um, they don't they don't touch on because they didn't know and nobody has ever known except what i'm bringing forward here that these kick these hormones adrenaline and all these other ones i just mentioned into our bloodstream these stimulants and that's where the high and the good feeling and we like them and the taste and the addictions and but we when we're high and we don't know it but we think that is a good thing because that's good food you know, wonderful food, you know, corn on the cob or, or cornmeal, you know, and, uh, you know, all of these things, a nice glass of milk and, you know, just on and on and on. And then, and then the coffee, geez, you, who doesn't have their coffee, you know, and, and, and the Coke, oh boy, Coca-Cola and, and, um, 
So if, if now, so it's a stimulant. So what's the big deal about the stimulant here? And, and aside from the diabetes now, we're not talking about this physical side. And we're not talking about all the chemicals and the farm raising and the pesticides and the herbicides and the fertilizing and uh, chemical growing. We're not talking about none of that. All we're talking about is the sugar and the stimulant factors here. So when we're in that state of high, I'm just glancing at the phone here. I see we've got about 30 minutes or something. Um, when we're in that state of high uh, that we like so much, and, and you know they're packing Coca-Cola and wheat you know, to the, every corner of the earth, you know, and rice and beans and, and the whole nine yards of everything, you know. Um, and is now we're high. Well, we don't know we're high. And, and so what's the big deal about high? What about us being high? When we're high, what comes along with that? When when that adrenaline surge I was talking about. And we got this adrenaline from this toast and we, everything we're having for breakfast here and then throughout the day. And then, and then we digest right off into the night. So we're 24-7. And that's all we've ever known. You know, when Mama Bear raised her cubs, they were nurse. And then after they got done nursing, they would, and Mama would be eating all these different foods, everything from berries to fish to, you know, whatever, ants and, and roots, different things and grubs and just all the different things the Mama Bear would eat. Uh, then the little ones are eating all those things. But if them little bears was human, we'd have put them on cow's milk, you know, shortly after mama's getting towards weaning there. And then we'd have been getting them toast and pablum and wheat and apple juice and just loading them up on these man-made sugars and carbohydrates, uh, thinking that's perfectly fine and good and okay. Never having a clue. And that's our grandmas again. I'm talking about my, my grandmas and, you know, and, and they're just wonderful people. And their grandpas and, and, and all the families and aunts and uncles and cousins and kids and, you know, the families and and and, um, and all the different ones that married in and, and the he's and the she's. And, and, and never once, ever, ever realizing that all this adrenaline that this stuff does, I'm just going to lump it into one when I use adrenaline there. And, and, and then I'll add the word adrenaline-like, because I suppose if you get to the scientific basis on this, it'll have, you know, maybe it'll be just pure adrenaline, or maybe, or maybe it'll have some variables into that. But it, but it makes us, we don't know it, but it's how the armies came to be. And it's how the warring, selfish greed came to be. Because when we're high, see, when that boom, that big sound hit, my vision, my sound, and my hearing all became very acute. And if I had to spring, if I looked out and there was some big truck barreling at one of the kids or the babies, boy, I could jump 10 feet so fast you never dreamed. I or you or anybody else. Even they had a picture on uh, YouTube the other day of, of a, I think it was about a seven-year-old boy and, and his little baby brother was falling off the counter. His mom had set him there for that one second and in that one second, baby was coming over and this guy makes a leap and he comes down and he scoops up that baby like you can't believe it. that was him and his adrenaline nature, you know, and that was a wonderful thing. And, and then, whew, and Mama, oh my goodness! And then they, then, then, then all of our adrenalines go back to normal again. See, so, but with all these stimulants that we're constantly uh, consuming and ingesting, we're, we're, it never gets a chance. It never goes back to normal. There's another surge on top of this of, 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 of adrenaline. I mean, it doesn't just eliminate our adrenaline because we already have this adrenaline. It, it, we still get the surge of adrenaline, you know. Something catastrophic is happening or quick. or And there's the romance thing, and, and there's a just plain old, you know, the little baby is so beautiful. I mean, we got all these emotions and all these feelings. And these stimulants affect everything and all of these things. And all of our instincts. So I always tell a story about the partridge on the log. Yeah, I got plenty of time yet. It's only 34 minutes. The partridge is on the log, just like the salmon. He comes in the in, in the stream there, and he's woo, 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 you know a six foot spot, and you know, and he gets them hen female salmons to to come in because he's got this nice territory, and they already seen, I'm sure, whenever other males come in, he's just having it out with them. This is my nest here for my baby by girls coming in here and we're going to make babies and have babies and sure enough uh, she'll sniff around pretty soon she comes in 
and, and she's liking this. She's all protected, and this is her home here, and she nests down in there. He's got a good bed made, and she finishes it up, lays her eggs, you know, and then, and then when she's gone, then he's, he's the guy, you know, and he gets to come over them, and he gets to release his sperm over them eggs. And then, and, and, and then you know, the life cycle goes on. It's just a wonderful, magnificent thing. You know, two years later, these, these, these salmon are going to go all the way out to the ocean and all halfway around the world or something. In two years, they're going to come right back here. You know, just the most remarkable thing. And what they go through getting here, and then they will die. That's their life cycle. So all of these different... Now, the partridge, he gets... Some, but the, here's what I'm getting at. That salmon... You know, he doesn't just keep taking over and then enslave these ones here that were trying to come in. Now he's the king and there, because he's not exaggerated, see, with all these stimulants. He, he's satisfied. He's got his spot. He's brought in the females. They've nested. They've done their thing. And, and, and the babies are going to be born here now. And, and, and it's all a wonderful thing. And he doesn't try to take over the whole river, the whole stream, or be the king of a billion people. And the same way with the partridge on that log, he goes and swells that big thing up on his chest, and, rip, 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 and you can hear him thumping, you know, and, and the hens, they hear it, and they, their juices are getting to go on too because it's around mating breeding time. And and um, and the other males, the young ones are coming up, you know, and they're getting their juices are starting to go and their hormones. And, and so they come in, and maybe they're going to, you know, this guy, I think I can take him, you know, and then find out they can't he just he's tougher than hell and, and and he's fighting for his turf and his territory big time so and if, if he is able to hold if he's still young enough mature enough and powerful enough to he, he'll fend all them males off and then the hens will come in you know and, and, and then their breeding takes place Okay, he doesn't go and take over the whole forest, make slaves out of all these ones that he can rule, because he's not exaggerated adrenaline. He's perfectly happy with that 25 feet in every direction or 100 feet, whatever it is, where his nesting and the raising of, of, of the young. And she nests, and he's there and around, and, and they get these beautiful little chicks come, you know, and just the preciousest things you ever saw. And, and, and they're raising, raising their young. It don't take over the whole forest and then another forest and then, and the wolves don't do that and nobody does that. The monkeys don't do that and the bees don't do that. They take they take their territory that that, that they need to, to 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 make their and raise their family. That's nature's perfect plan. But when we're exaggerated, this that's why I say in the cause of war and the kingdoms. If you look at these big warring machines, they show they just got done showing on on the television there, and I just I sit and I look at that and I think I think it's Yorkshire because you you always hear or, or something like that. I lost the name right now, but you know you know, Buckingham Palace we hear about a lot. They had a big fire, the one I'm talking about, uh, not that long ago, and they were showing the Queen. And but if you look at these palaces of these kings. You know, and, and, and all the king's horses and all the king's men and these armies, you know, taking over the whole world, murdering everything in sight yeah, and, until everybody bows to them. And they don't even got to carry a billy club. I mean, they can just walk everything. Nobody's shooting them. You know, they've got everybody just tamed and up in them. Of course, and everybody, in addition to just the kings and the queens being high on us, this, these wheat adrenaline substances, so are they, the common. So, uh, but they don't have to happen to be that hierarchy type thing of who got in position where. Now, you know, the British, they probably got rised up uh, to absorb and beat the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire probably rised up to beat the, uh, you know, the Greeks away or the, or the, or the Egyptians. Or, and, and, because they all, see, all in these regions started eating all these hybrid fruits and grains and and and, uh, and then alcohol and caffeine, and then when it became the Americas, there was nicotine added to that and cocaine, and so all of this had, had been taking place. The the Jews and the Egyptian Empire, you know, that's that's all. Um, and hemp, marijuana plays in here uh, there, and uh, another message from Hannah to Hannah Bunnell. One conversation. I don't even know what that means. These kids, they, they hook up with their different groups of people on these phones, and then they know when they send some. If they want to, they send a message to an individual, but if they want to have group messages and stuff. And when and then when I get these phones back, I end up with um, 
some of that stuff still on there. I try to wipe them, but it won't let me. It puts everything back on, all them numbers and stuff. But I'm okay with that because I can I can go through and do my stuff. This is the iPhone 6S Plus here that I'm filming on. I guess the i7s. The girls got i7s, and uh, I guess they're even a little better yet. But these do a great job. You know, I got five thousand dollars worth of cameras here, and I really could have did it all from the beginning with a. Uh, with the iPhone, except that when I go out to filming, and that's not to say the iPhone is not going to do wonderful outside and in, in all quarters, but when you get multiple cameras and you're just going to really do nature stuff and really get great sound, I, my equipment will, will all uh, will utilize all that before this thing gets done. So here we are now, and we've come across the waters, and, and the people call it the pond, you know, before we came across the pond, that's kind of a cute way of saying it. And, and slaughtered all these Indians and, and, and um, just took the land from everything north to South America and, and uh, the English and the French and the Spanish and, and, and uh, you know, killed everybody. And then fought ourselves amongst each other and, and just warring on this exaggerated greed, see, that we think is a normal, natural thing. We think that's just part of the human being. And it's no more part of the human being than it's a part of the salmon or, or, or the partridge uh, uh, or, the, or the bumblebee or the honeybee. It's just there's nothing in there that's, that makes it anywhere near natural and normal. It's all exaggerated instincts. And, and we're also cold-blooded in there. These, these other creatures don't, don't just wantonly slaughter all the women and babies and children and everything that's in their path. To, to get their what they want and get complete control of everybody and everything. They don't do that. See, and that's the lack of empathy. When that adrenaline surges up, I, I'm, I'm centered on, on myself and my loved ones and, and my importance and our importance, and, 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 and I'm far less concerned about, you know, anybody else. I'm, not, I'm thinking about my personal needs. Now, people say, oh, I don't do that. I'm a missionary. I'm just good to everybody. I'm this kind, loving person, you know, and, and, and they're doing that so that they can be this kind, loving person, you know, because all the while they're doing it, this whole still thing is going on and all these murders and slaughters and taking over. And, and, and they're carrying their grain of sand. Now, I'm not taking away from everybody out there that's trying to do things better. But what I am saying is if they would factor in what I'm talking about here and get back to our true instincts here, and, you know, and then how do we apply this to this modern age, this jet age and this digital age and seven and a half billion people and, 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 and these enormous war machines and this enormous food chain, a global and, and, and energy chain and, and economic, you know, commerce and, and more, 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 build, 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 power, 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 you know, and I mean, if Trump is not an example for the world to see, you know, and, and everybody knows he got 60 million votes, Christians, every one of them, and, and, and another 60 million of their kin and kids that couldn't vote, so 120 million right here in the United States, that's over a third of the population well that leaves two-thirds but i'll tell you something that this one-third it controls everything they got the courthouses the cops the police the armies the, they got everything and these revolutionaries you know uh, in the different races and different um socio uh, political beliefs you know well everything from socialist to communist to uh, or the middle road people or whoever they are and they, they, you're not going to disarm, you know, American Rifle Association. You're not going to disarm these people, and you're not going to uh, change them politically uh, quickly and easily. I'm not going to say you're not going to do it, and it's not going to happen. I think they're going to destroy themselves. I think there's, there's, it's self-destructive what they're doing. But here's the thing about it. All us wonderful liberal left-wing Democrats, the, what we're offering you know, we got so we gotta bring everything into our fold. We gotta love all the homosexuals, and we gotta just think all the drugs are okay, and let everybody out of prison, and give everybody food and checks, and and we're just gonna do this Marxist, socialist, communism, uh, utopia, you know, world, and and uh, Robin Hood. They used to say I used to sell cars, 
and new cars in some of the big lots and, and up and down the coast, uh, west coast. And whenever you talk, try to talk humanity because boy, it was just criminal what goes on in these car lots to, to, the, to these customers and the customers don't have a clue. They come in and these salesmen are just so nice and they got this big beautiful showroom and beautiful cars and, and they haven't a clue you know, what, what's happening. And these people are just, they don't know how to buy cars, you know. They just think, well, here's big ads and on television, let's go look at that car, you know. They don't know that they're, they ain't just walking into the lion's den. You know, and how come these car manufacturers, every one of them, Dodge, Chrysler, Ford, every single one of them, every other one there is, allow all this and let their sales do that to these people. You know, that, that's part of the greater sin here. But any time, I could see from early on, I, this was, you know, you're taking little, you know, common persons that are working on their jobs and getting things going, taking care of their families and just charging them twice as much sometimes as they needed to and should have had to pay and getting the very highest rate of interest you can get them to pay. It doesn't got anything to do with what they qualify for. They may qualify for 2%, but if you can get 8 because they're vulnerable and gullible, you're going to get 8 and if they could buy this car for 2000 if they wanted to, and, and if they knew it, but if you can get 4000 double, you're going to get the 4000 you're going to get the 8%, and you're going to sell them the high-priced insurance, and you're going to be the best friend they ever had, you know? So I would say occasionally, I'd say, gee, that, this thing gets a little bit, um, I don't know, what, what even, uh, words to put to it. And then, but they knew what I was talking about. This would be four or five salesmen sitting around. And then they would say, well, you Robin Hood, you know, like I'm Robin Hood because I don't, don't want to rape, you know, all innocent people for, for no good reason. You get a bigger commission. See, that's the, the way it's set up. If you get these big grosses, you get these four times as much commission. You sell what they call a mini, you you might make sixty seven dollars or something. But if you if you do this big full gooser here, uh, you might you might make three hundred and eighty dollars off of that one sale. You know, and you one or two a day. You know, and, and I mean it's serious money you're talking about. And that's the one where they're talking about the guy that laughs all the way to the bank. So that's empathy I'm talking about in, in one form. You know, it's got a lot of forms. And it doesn't matter to them if these people go broke or get a divorce or their children starve or, you know, or now I, there was one color gal, this one big lot I worked at, and she was in the store and she was going, oh, my God, you know, oh, you know, and nobody would go near her, you know, and, and, but I did, and, and I said, and she, but she couldn't talk. She was so flabbergasted. And, 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 and I knew what happened, you know, she, and she was saying, oh, I got to pay this. And th she had come in and they had just embraced her and tricked her and conned her. And she came in for that 1995 advertised for 200 down and $67 a month. And they saddled her with something for three times as much money, about the same year car, the same car, and 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 uh, took double loans out. Now she's paying 197 because she's got enough credit that says that she pays her bills, so that they can do that. And and then they just they steal their trade, they call it, uh, you know, take it in. It'll make it look like they're giving big money, but they're giving nothing. I mean, they just shaft these people every way you can imagine. This is our business world I'm talking about, and it's. Across the board, and, and, and uh, you can go just about any place and anywhere. And they got it all rationalized that these profits that they need in, in order to and, they, and who controls all that? Well, that's that's that. Uh, and then who controls the police and the courts and the judges and, and the Congress and the Senate and the, and the Supreme Court and just across the board here that endorse the Christians. And that are endorsing this whole entire thing. And boy, they're up in arms. This is not them. They're these wonderful, loving, caring, sharing souls, you know. We're just, with other ones, we're just baby murdering monsters. You know, everything we say is evil and of the devil, you know. They are these kind, loving ones. So, but, but the thing about it, and I'll go back again, is both sides were all high on the wheat and the sugar and the caffeine and the alcohol and the nicotine. And, and, and even though there's some very meritable things on, on what's over on the left, if you can get all that garbage out of there, and I guess it's something on the right Republican Christian side that's not 
You know, Christ himself, I'm not kidding you. If you interpret Jesus Christ, I'll interpret Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a man. And, and, and he tried to put an end to this. They were going to stone him and his mother to death. And they were going to stone his father, Joseph, to death. And, and Joseph has this vision. And so Christ is raised as this not just an utter kid. You know, there's a great big thing going on here. And he's supposed to be the Old Testament prophet and God. And, and Mary was supposed to have conceived without a man. And, and um, uh, the whole thing. But, but the one thing that he sees, and it's pretty obvious if you just look at it, is this thing about sin. They were to stone his mother to death, and him, and him and her. You know, he is, would have been a, what they call an embryo now, a little tiny baby to start with there, and and, and as big as a pea or something, you know. And they're going to stone her to death, and they're going to go catch him and drag him out. And then after they get him stoned to death, I think they hang him up on crosses and trees and stuff, and the buzzards and the worms and the ants to eat, and everybody to see him. This is what happens if you commit fornication. If you, if, you, if you boy and girl uh, consummate your, your love and attraction to one another quite normally and naturally, uh, you're awful beings. You've got to contain that, and every, all your parents and families need to contain you and him and, and keep you apart and not let this happen. Well, we don't want our females to breed too young, or our males for that matter. And, and uh, but it's sure not that, and and then adultery, of course, you know that's a that's a terrible one, and then you know it does mess up families, but you know this whole monogamy thing might play in here too, although I believe in it. But um, you know it's it's um, I I don't know where to go with this. This whole thing is um, is ludicrous, and it's all trying to contain these exaggerated instincts of protectionism of your immediate family and your grouping. But then when, when your immediate family and grouping is ruled by the king, and he comes and takes your sons and daughters and takes them to his war, and, and, and you got to give them to him and not just begrudgingly or even weepingly, you got to be proud that they're going to go kill for the king. And, and uh, because otherwise he'll kill all of you and he'll bring as many as he's got to kill until he's got nothing but people that are adoring him. You know, Queen Elizabeth, she's doing her big thing now. She had to stay home for Christmas. So she's getting ill and she's in her later, later, latest years here. And I have never have looked to see who's next in line there in this horrid. That's where I started out earlier. If you look at that kingdom there and that wealth thing of theirs. And then I heard the guy on the television, oh, they, everybody hates us because we're wealthy. Yeah, everybody hates us because we're wealthy. So that just blows off everything. So everybody over here is talking don't mean a goddamn thing because we just hate them because they're wealthy. They got their first and they got the most and they got the nicest houses and cars and bank accounts and investments and we hate them for that. We're just, you know, these awful people that are jealous, you know. They're not looking at the reality. Uh, um, uh, there was Christ, you know, uh, you, you, for a rich man to get through the eye of a needle, he'd, it would be harder for that man uh, to get to heaven, I think is the way they were describing that, than, than, than for a camel. You know, a camel's a big animal to get through the eye of a needle. That's, we're not talking a big moat where the camel can get through like this. We're talking a needle that you're so wet that this got an eye in it, you know, that you can just barely get a thread through. That's that. And he's got to get a camel through that son of a bitch. Impossible. That's what Christ is saying. And because you're taken. And, and, and so Christ was seeing the whole entire thing. What Christ didn't, and he had to put it on the devil and, and people had this evil being in themselves. He had no idea that it was the wheat and the coffee and the alcohol and the nicotine and this whole array of uh, hybriding and, and all that. Uh, wouldn't he have liked to know? Wouldn't anybody have liked to know? And so here I am with this discovery. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this here and reach over and push that red button and it'll, it'll sign off here. And So it's just me. And, and um, we could say saying the same old thing again, but it's the same old thing, bullshit. This is this is got uh, every time I get one of these, I get a little bit 
little bit, maybe, if you, if you were to follow them. It's just like if you were to read these postings and entries. But we're not going anywhere with this, see, because nobody's sending it around. So it's up to me to, to figure out how to do that. And, and, I, and I don't, I'm still wrestling with that. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, what if I was sitting here singing songs and I could sing really good? Would, uh, would then everybody say, hey, this guy sings really good. What is this other stuff he's talking about? Or if I could get up and make comedian stuff here or do a stand-up comedy, you know, and just everybody break a gut. This is so fun and so funny. Would, would everybody pay attention? Or would somebody pay attention, you know? This thing is, the, the people can't grasp it. They can't fathom it. And I just accidentally, amongst all of my experiences, I, I did experience some drugs. So I, I do know what a high is. You know, I remember the first time I, I just laughed. I said, this is it. You know, sure, it feels good and everything brightens, you know. The, the Aztec and the Maya, a link to paradise is what they considered caffeine. Uh, the, 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 everything would brighten a little and the sounds and the birds and the water and the, just the clouds and everything was just more pretty and beautiful. And that was the high. And, and they didn't have a clue, their link to paradise, that that's how come they were murdering monsters and enslaving people and blood sacrifices. Because it also did things to their instincts and turned them into these warring monster pyramid building, enslaving, you know, just horrid people. Just like the British um, European kingdoms and that whole big thing I was talking about, you know, Windsor Palace and uh, Yorkshires and all them different ones. I wish I could remember that one that got the fire because it was just Jesus. It's like city blocks of these unbelievable Cathedral type, uh, I don't know how your words you'd use for that, buildings and stuff. Uh, for this royalty, you know, and these royal carriages and the gold and, and the orchard and the crowns with all these diamonds and gold and, and all the Buckingham guards, you know, and boy, all this royalty. This is all high. This is all stimulants, you know, uh, beyond comprehension and beyond belief. All down right through to the commoners. There's a thing on uh, CNN, I posted it, I think, on the website, about um, uh, Hitler. And it wasn't just Hitler on, on amphetamines and methamphetamines. It was right through the ranks of his armies and stuff. And, and some people blew it off, said, well, not big a deal. You know, they just, they just like the gold pills, they would call it. The pilots, American pilots would take a few of these to get home on. They'd already been out there for 18 hours or something, and they got to get home now, and, and they're just so fatigued. Uh, so they think it's all innocent and just another dose of coffee type of a thing. But it's lots, lots more than that. Lots, lots more than that. And, and uh, so those drugs, as well as all these other drugs, are all doing the same thing. So that's how we got to where we're at today. So we're going to try to unravel this mess. We've got a lot of work to do. And a good place to do it. And, and nothing is going to get unraveled. I'll guarantee you that with my life. Nothing is going to get unraveled. Zero, period. It's going to take all these twists and turns of whatever they are. and Good things, bad things, and horrible things, and wars, and... Uh, recoveries and everything that's going to occur, but nothing can get fixed without factoring in this, this discovery of mine right here. Okay, thank you and have a good day and I appreciate having talked with you. Have a good day and a Merry Christmas.